Hi folks, Travis Fox here with FoxOptic.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at an all new and exciting offering coming out of Pulsar. Uh, this item is going to be on our website starting today and available for purchase. This is the new Pulsar Thermion 2 XL50 LRF Thermal Rifle Scope. It's going to feature an all new 1024 768 high definition thermal sensor that is 35 millikelvin or better. It's going to pair that to a 1024 768 AMOLED display. Um, this thing brings kind of everything to the party. It's it's going to give you the widest field of view in the Pulsar rifle scope offerings currently at 14 degrees coupled up with the longest range detection at 2515 yards. So you know in the 640-480 class devices you kind of had to pick and choose between the XP50 at 12.4 degrees and the XG50 at 8.7 degrees, I believe it was, but you know, so that would push you up to 3x, give you a narrower field of view, but add 100 yards on the top end ID ranges. So, you know, you were sacrificing field of view to get the longest ID and detection range possible. This thing is going to do slightly better than both of those devices at both ends of the spectra. You're going to get a little more field of view and a little bit more detection range all in one device. Um, it really genuinely is exciting and a versatile device. It's coming in at a really affordable price point compared to some of the competitors that are bringing out HD devices at $79.99.97. It encompasses a new version of the Pulsar Stream Vision Ballistics app, which you'll see some uh, pretty major improvements in. I think that we'll see those show up later on in the other devices as well, but it's going to come initially installed on this device. Uh, we're also going to see the re-emergence of the remote control. It will now be a Bluetooth tethering. Um, we're also going to see in these devices are going to start coming with two batteries. We're going to kit ours with two APS-3 batteries. In the factory kits, they're going to choose to do a two and a three. I'm going to switch uh, my kits over to both threes just because I don't want my guys having to switch the caps on them. Uh, we are also going to be including the Bobro uh, SCAR mount with ours. This is a really cool mount. Um, it uses some little spring uh, acceptors on the underneath the levers that basically set your cross locking pressure so that you don't have to use the nut on the opposite side the way you do on some devices. Uh, the major benefit to that is going to be if you are going, if you're utilizing the profiles inside the devices, which now that you have the ballistics app, you're allowed to run 10 of those. So there are more and more people are going to be utilizing that to go gun to gun or, you know, as we're changing devices because of the versatility in these things. What you'll get into is your pick rails will have some mist tolerance and this Bobro mount deals with that. I mean, it's basically a plug and play solution to that. Uh, they've been decently inexpensive or expensive and hard to kind of add to that, but I was able to get a good deal on those by buying them in a big enough quantity that I'm going to be kitting them with this device. So let's get into the footage. I want to start showing you around this. I'll be right back with you. Okay, folks, so what I'm showing you here, I got a deer back here at I think it's 755 yards. Um, just showing you the ability of the rangefinder to acquire targets of that size at that distance. Very reliably able to, to get those kind of targets at about that distance, honestly, out to about 800, a little over 800. Start getting past that, it, it's going to need to be a bigger, more reflected style target. Um, but Again, here when I'm back to out, uh, the resolution was good enough that I could clearly tell that was a deer. Here I've got some a bit closer, just trying to show you I had a buck in here messing with these does. And I could clearly, you know, I couldn't count points or nothing, but I could clearly see not only that it was a buck, but it was a decent sized buck. I could make the antlers inside the display. I think the video doesn't capture quite as good as the vividness in the display. I would, I would attribute that sometimes to I think that as the as the video gets smaller and you're zoomed out, our eyes pretty good at training, you know, like down on those on those smaller images, and it will 
kind of trick our brain into showing us better clarity than what we really get when things get a bit compressed but plus the signal pickups and the vividness in the display the LED presentation is a little cleaner and better than what the video playback is so again I was e easily able to tell that thing had horns in the display I, you know it's a, obviously a little rougher here in the video playback to be able to see that but there you can kind of see I don't know if, if you can see it that well but I could clearly see him licking his lips there kind of wetting his nose um, they're getting kind of ruddy in our area but the main takeaway I'm trying to show you here in these videos is the resolutional clarity that you're able to produce combined with the field of view in this XL is what impresses me the most so that you know there's gonna be guys that say oh I should have had higher base magnification in the device but what they don't take into account is you know the lens diameter focal length combinations that it takes to produce those higher end clear targets you know are going to come at the expense of setting the focal length farther out yeah then you get better magnification but you start sacrificing field of view so you know you jump over into some of the 64480 devices that have lower sensor counts so they can get by with higher magnification and and produce images similar to these at distance but it comes at the sacrifice of field of view and that's the beauty of the 1024 768 sensor is the versatility that that's bringing versus most of the other devices on the market that are able to produce these kind of distant images starting at seven you know seven to nine degrees field of view whereas here we're starting at 14 degrees field of view and producing the same back end uh, resolutional results and shot placement performance so that that's a huge step forward in terms of versatility and and in the case of the pulsar product compared to envision the trigicon products that are producing similar top end results coming in at that potentially fifteen hundred dollars higher than this that's pretty impressive um, here just showing you the different color modes available obviously if you've had a pulsar device before that's going to be pretty standard you know you get a wide variety of high resolution uh, low eye fatigue you know fast target acquisition palettes you can kind of run whatever suits you the best um, here again showing more deer with antlers it's just kind of a testament at that distance these deer are in hard bone mass at this point to be able to pick those antlers up is is kind of giving you an idea of how sensitive the thermal sensor is to be able to still produce that like in the case of this one you can see it both in in the video but i could see it even better in the display and that's at 200 yards still getting a nice tight edge outline there um, and this is in a pretty rough condition he's in grass he's on a you know he's on kind of a high contrast background that all plays against the clarity um, uh, here just kind of focusing on that field of view again it, it's just it's one of those things where that field of view is I just can't mention it enough how bringing that with the high zooming capability adds up to give you you know a lot of versatility in a single device when you're out there hunting by yourself and you go to that eyepiece and are, are ready to you know get with the program you're locked into what you can see edge to edge inside that display in terms of your situational awareness and the importance of that is what I'm trying to relevate here so that you get some kind of an idea of, of why that's important I mean if you if you can imagine it like when you see me zooming up to the three and a half power here versus when I'm back at the 1.75 in a lot of the other devices on the market that's all the wider you're going to get you know so so you're limited left to right on what you can actually see and or if you want to open that field of view up then you're limiting yourself in terms of how much magnification you can produce on the back end because on a 64480 device you have about half the thermistor pixels and and that's going to start cutting into your resolution if you start opening that field of view up but again just kind of showing you these deer you know the clarity how well the thing can hold the edge outline is pretty impressive here the vividness of the background you can you know you can obviously see the trunks on those trees pretty good those deer as they were working through that fence line back there my dog he's out 
he's out sniffing around. He's it was pretty dark here, you know, obviously, so he couldn't tell they were out there, but he could smell where they had been up on the front end of that field. Um, here, I don't know, I got a little bit of a video issue, I guess, when this transposed. It wasn't in the initial video, but when I edited the footage, I uh, created a little bit of garbly stuff down there in the bottom. But I uh, had a couple of deer here uh, coming up to this fence line. That first one blasted right through it, and I wasn't really expecting that, so I give him a little whistle here on this one to stop him, and then he kind of curiously trying to figure out what I'm doing over there. Again, like I said, I don't know what that kind of clustery video thing going on there is. That was my editor that added that in. The original video that came off the device did not have that issue. Um, but you know, can obviously see the horns on that deer there at that distance, really good resolution. I show a lot of this in the black hot because black hot, white hot give you the, the most kind of resolutional performance and black hot obviously I think tends to show, especially like the fauna, the grass and the background and the target subject a little bit more realistic. Um, I, sometimes I prefer white hot when I'm running though just to get rid of some of that bright white in the background. Okay, here I'm going to be going over a few improvements that they've made to the ballistics app and the zeroing portion of the menu. So one of the first things I want to show you here is now um, we have the ability in that ballistics app to have that range readout down there towards the central portion of the reticle. Uh, you can remove that using the menu, there's an option under the laser rangefinder settings to take that off. I'll be showing you that here in a minute. We also have some additional, what I'll call ballistic ticks, you know, associated with the ballistic distances. And you have the ability to choose between an X, a simple line, or a simple line with mill dots. So here I am going into that LRF sub portion of the menu, showing you how to turn that auxiliary indication of distance off or you can uh, change the positioning of that. Also from this menu under this WID, you have three choices. Uh, currently they don't show you what those choices are, but again the first one is an X, the second one is a simple ballistic line, and the third one is a ballistic line with three mill dots left and right. So you can see there where I switched it from that uh, ballistic line with the three mill dots left and right to an X. And now I believe I'm going to go in and show you that in the reticle submenu, you can also change the intensity. Previously, the, that little X was pretty bold. They've lightened up on the line thickness, and they've also gave you intuitive control. So as you increase and decrease the intensity of the reticle, the intensity of the, of the X is able to be adjusted alongside of that. So here in a minute, I'll be entering that menu and showing you that um, and how you would accomplish that. Again, you're going to go into the main menu. You're going to go into the reticle subsection of that menu and increase or decrease the brightness of that reticle. Um, you can also see where the ballistics calculator gives you a fair amount of information in the upper right hand corner of the screen. It's going to give you a range distance. It's going to show you some angle compensation information. So there you can see I'm increasing that reticle brightness and you can see kind of the effect that that has on that X when I drop back out here. Also be aware, so I'm going to take a reading here to get the X to pop up. And then also be aware in the in the menu you can now, as long as the rangefinder isn't active on the screen, if you do a simple press on that rangefinder button, you can get that X to fan, fast cancel and get off of the display. So basically you just let the you know the rangefinder will time out, do a short press on that range finding button, and then don't do the secondary press to rearrange a target, and the X will just cancel itself out. So that can be really handy in some situations, you know, if, if you're going to take a follow-up shot and don't necessarily want that to be displayed on there. Uh, another improvement that they made in the zeroing menu previously, the displays in terms of move equivalencies were shown in millimeters at 100 meters. So I'm going inside the zeroing menu here to show you that, and you can see right now 
zoomed back at uh, 1.75x, it's telling me because intuitively I'm in yards, it, in, it switches that and it's telling me the click equivalencies are 0.87 inches at 100 yards. As you zoom, the background image doubles in size and so those move equivalencies will go down. So, you know, if you hit that little plus button back there while you're in the windage elevation subsection, you can perform the zooming function without having to drop out of that menu and you're going to get you know a finer move click equivalency and that's going to be reflected so you know where that can be really really handy is for the guy that say for example you know takes a shot and he knows that he's four inches off the target and you know four inches high and two inches to the right you could essentially go to a certain uh, magnification it'll tell you the inch equivalencies you divide that out and just make that many you know detent click adjustments to be able to zero doing it that way so another another intuitive improvement to the menu system um, they've, they've really come a long way with this thing I think I think that we'll see them continue to do so Okay, folks, I've got the new Pulsar Thermion 2 XL50 LRF set up here. Uh, I've got the ballistic uh, calculator. I'm running Stream Vision Ballistic Calculator. I've got it set up for this as a 6 millimeter Creedmoor. I'm running the Hornady 108 grain ma uh, match bullet. So, got some hot water bottles set up there. I'll be recording in the device so you can see what I'm doing. Let's see how it works. Okay, so this was the day I sighted in. I was shooting my six millimeter ARC. It was one of the profiles I set up. This is at 480. Uh, the best group I was able to get was two and a half inches. I was very confident shooting that distance. Okay, folks, I hope you found that informative. Uh, I didn't have this thing very far before that I was able to get this video out, so I kind of had to rush around there. You know, I'd like to come back and obviously uh, do a little better job on that. I do have another video coming up where I compare this to the Envision Halo XRF, uh, their 50 millimeter. So just be aware that'll be coming out also. Um, if I had to summarize this thing in one word, it would be versatile. That 1024 768 sensor bringing that 14 degree field of view coupled up with that 2515 yard detect range. It just kind of gives you the best of both worlds all in one device. And I think this thing is really exciting. And if you get your hands on one, you're really gonna like it. Uh, if you'd like to give me a call, toll free 877-806-2977. I'll be more than happy to talk with you about it or these will be available on our website, www.foxoptic.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day. <music>